Hi everyone, I'm Rosemarie Miller here with Rob Itzbitz, the founder of ETFYourself.com, here to tell us about the three best growth stocks for 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today, Rob. Sure, sure. Great to be here. And it's funny if people heard that introduction, they say, okay, ETFYourself.com uh, must be one of those ETF geeks uh, and, uh, you know, guilty. Uh, <laughs> But uh, remember, every ETF that uh, somebody analyzes uh, has a group of individual stocks in it if it's an equity ETF. And, and obviously, a big part of my background as a mutual fund manager was, was in the equity space. So uh, yeah, we, uh, we went for three different ETFs here. And look, we're talking about growth. And so mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I've been a macro strategist as long as I can uh, remember, uh, probably going back 30 years. And so, you know, with the caveat that my macro view for this year, next year is, uh, let's say, a little more sanguine, uh, not uh, through the roof bullish. Uh, but that doesn't matter to somebody who's trying to find growth stocks uh, for long-term purposes. And so, you know, none of this is personal advice, of course, but uh, I picked out three that I thought, okay, these are not just stocks. These are businesses. These are franchises. They're going to have their ups and downs because as a uh, famous investor, value investor, uh, Benjamin Graham famously said, uh, the stock market in the short term is a voting machine and in the long term it's a weighing machine and I think these all may weigh out longer term so we'll start with BlackRock and uh, for those who uh, are familiar with the ETF business uh, you can probably fill in the words for me BlackRock are the kings of the ETF business uh, they had a uh, they've had a, a tremendous business before that, but uh, they really their iShares brand is almost uh, like we say band aids uh, mm -hmm. instead of uh, what it really is, which is an adhesive bandage. Well, for ETFs, I'm sure there are a lot of investors, maybe millions of them, that say, "Oh, uh, well, I'm I I just use iShares," and what they really mean is they invest in ETFs. So when you get to that point. Uh, yeah, and you've got a market cap of 110 billion. So certainly, they, you know, they're not going anywhere. Uh, they've been very uh, hesitant to uh, cut their uh, stock price to split it, uh, similar to uh, Warren Buffett and uh, Berkshire Hathaway. So you know, stocks uh, you know in the 700s per share. Um, you know, it is uh, not cheap and not outrageously expensive at 21 times uh, uh, trailing earnings at the time we wrote the article and. Um, you know, this is only only a 35 year old business. Uh, and I just feel like they have such a uh, again, kind of a Buffett quote, uh, wide moat. They have such a wide moat in the ETF business. There's there are uh, a small number, about five or six uh, firms in ETF world that uh, dominate the assets and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and among the dominators, BlackRock is the dominator of the dominators. Um, and uh, they've got over nine trillion in uh, AUM. And uh, so I think that, uh, that that's the story there. Uh, we've got a couple more. Yes, we do have a couple more, two more. Great. Okay, great. So uh, let's to turn to Salesforce. Mm -hmm. uh, which really uh, one of those businesses that uh, in the last dot com bubble, uh, you know, Salesforce was uh, just getting started. The company uh, started to uh, open up their doors in uh, 1999. Um, you know, they are a uh, software as a service business. Uh, a lot of it is really based on their, their flagship uh, CRM, uh, uh, customer relationship management uh, software. So uh, you know, a confirmed leader, uh, uh, you know, they're not technically part of the Magnificent Seven as we call them, but maybe just outside. And um, uh, they are one of the 30 stocks in my favorite market indicator, the Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average. Uh, 30 stocks in the Dow. Um, and Salesforce is the only one that's never paid a dividend. 
Uh, and the fact that even the Dow committee would allow them in there tells you something about the quality of this business because the Dow historically has been dividend paying stocks. Uh, so there's no dividend. Uh, if you look at trailing PE, it's going to be uh, somewhere in the 90s. Uh, so that's not really the way to look at this one. These are growth companies. And uh, you know, while the stock did move up quite a bit last year uh, with, uh, uh, with the tech sector, uh, if you were thinking on a longer term t uh, time horizon, I would say at least five years, uh, you know, Salesforce, again, is one of those uh, not going to go anywhere kind of companies, should continue to grow, has the ability to grow by acquisition, and in a high interest rate environment, the longer we stick around with that, and I think it could be a little bit, uh, companies that can self-fund because they have that kind of cash flow. I mean, that's kind of common to to all three of these. Uh, they don't have to worry that they are maturing old debt and now they have to issue more debt just to stay alive at a much higher rate, uh, which is going to destroy a lot of smaller companies, not these three. Uh, mm -hmm. And speaking of three, the third one is uh, Nike. Uh, I still remember uh, when I was much younger person, uh, uh, being in a store, uh, I think I was shopping for Adidas or Puma, and I remember the salesperson said to me, oh, have you seen these Nikes? They're going to knock the other guys off the block. Well, never were truer words said, right? Mm. Uh, so uh, look, I mean, it's uh, another Dow component. Uh, 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 again, another skinny yielder, because that's kind of not what we're looking for in growth stocks. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, the, they've been Nike since 1971. Uh, there's a great movie about uh, Phil Knight and the influence they had with uh, uh, Michael Jordan and the Air Jordans. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the movie, but uh, it kind of tells the story. And, you know, today, Nike, I think it suffers from uh, very high expectations. Uh, the stock has really been crushed on earnings a couple times the last year, but... Yeah, again, the ability to do what big growth companies can do to grow, whether it's acquisition, uh, uh, quashing uh, competition, and uh, let's face it, like all these companies, uh, pure innovators, pure innovators, mm -hmm. and in the case of Nike, very much a, uh, a trendsetter in the retail world. And so uh, it, 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 it makes the top three. So what key factors should investors keep in mind when researching and considering growth stocks for their portfolios? Well, that is a direct uh, result of what your investment time horizon is. Uh, I'm not uh, a uh, investment advisor, registered investment advisor anymore. I was for 27 years, though, sold my practice a few years ago to focus on research. And so I've sat in that chair. And the one thing that, uh, as they say, you know, you you, you can take uh, the boy out of fiduciary. You can't take the fiduciary out of the boy. And uh, so uh, I, I would say to anybody who's looking for growth stocks, say first ask yourself why. Is it for immediate gain? Are you looking for the pop? Well, in that case, use trading strategies. If you're looking for growth companies, focus on the growth. Yes, the valuation is important, but sometimes you just don't have a place to go because they're all overvalued. Uh, and in large cap growth companies, it's kind of where we are. So, uh, and then, yeah, look, I mean, uh, uh, find good resources. Don't just listen to what uh, uh, I or anyone else has to say. Uh, go and start to learn about some, some of the key factors and uh, focus on sustainable growth, not grew very quickly last year, period. Mm -hmm. And also in your selection process for those stocks, how important was diversification in your selection process? Well, we're talking about a portfolio of three. Uh, mm -hmm. So really, as far as I went, was to not find uh, any two companies that were really in the same space. Uh, so you've got one in tech, uh, you've got one in the financial space, but not in the banking business. BlackRock is, is not really a bank, uh, they're an investment manager. And uh, uh, in the case of Nike, uh, you know, it's in the uh, consumer space. So uh, you know, I think that's, that's a, 
that's sort of an introduction to an introduction uh, of diversification uh, with, with those three. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess the last thing I would say is, look, whether it's uh, uh, growth investing or not, uh, I, I'm still a fan of the Dow. Uh, uh, it, you know, not all the companies have the fastest growth rates, but it's 30 stocks that are, you know, very established companies. And if the more you learn about those types of companies, the more you start to learn about what is important in that word I used before, which is your know, earnings and profit and uh, uh, ultimately what investors reward, uh, which is the sustainability, the ability to just keep doing it year in, year out, regardless of whether the stock price is flipping up and down at, at this moment. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Rob. This has been incredibly insightful. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marjorie. Absolutely.